Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the Wireshark series. Now in today's video, we're going to be looking at the Wireshark capture filter. Alright, so without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you need to understand is uh, that the capture filter is very different from the display filter. Now I've just opened up Wireshark and you can see this already on the on the home menu or the welcome screen uh, that we have a capture filter right over here and it'll give you the option to enter a capture filter before you start capturing any traffic on any interface. All right, now, when you talk about the display filter, that lies up here. And I mentioned that I'm going to uh, explain what both of them do, but in this video, I want to capture the, uh, I want to talk about the capture filter first before I move on to the display filter. All right, so, uh, by default, um, Wireshark will pick up a lot of traffic if you perform um, a normal scan without specifying any type of traffic that you want to use. All right. Uh, and of course, this is going to pick up traffic with all the different protocols, you know, DNS, um, TCP, uh, all, all the other, all, all the layers really. So your application layer where you have SSH, uh, you know, traffic, all of the, all of the traffic that is possibly going on on your network will be captured. Now that's if you're using, uh, an interface that it, that is on monitor mode or on promiscuous mode. Now, as I mentioned in, mentioned in my interface, my uh, adapter is um, well my computer is connected to a switch so i i should be able to get uh, i should be able to get uh, any traffic uh, on on my network or you know any traffic from the com computers connected to that switch all right uh, now we use the capture filter to specify the traffic that we want and i'll explain how to do this i'll try and explain uh, all the techniques or the all the best ones that i know uh, and what it does is it limits the traffic that will be captured and only the traffic that we want will be captured. So let's say we only wanted to capture, um, you know, uh, TCP information or TCP data or TCP packets. We only wanted to capture that. Um, let's say we only wanted to capture SSH traffic on the network. We can do that as well. Now, the difference between the display filter and the capture filter is the capture filter will only capture that type of, of data. All right. So let's say I specify that I only want to capture uh, SSH uh, data or, you know, to, to, to capture any SSH data on the network, then it will only capture that data. So any other data or any other traffic in the background, like HTTP, TCP, uh, SSH, uh, you know, all of that traffic will be left behind and is not going to be stored uh, in uh, the the packet. As you can see, I have, um, I have some here that I had saved uh, some PCAP files, but uh, really that that's what you want to keep in mind. So when you're talking about the capture, uh, the capture packet or the, uh, the capture itself, the display filter is there to specify data from the capture itself, while the capture filter is used to, to us actually specify data from the capture, from the live capture. All right. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to open up my ethernet zero interface. All right. And, uh, I'm just going to click on it right over here. And once that opens up, that's going to start capturing all the network data. Now we want to specify our capture filter. So you want to go into this little cog over here that tells you this is the capture options. All right. So in your Wireshark capture interfaces menu, what you're going to have here is a really comprehensive menu that contains everything to do with your interfaces and whether or not they are in promiscuous mode or in monitor mode. Now, if I'm just to expand this, you'll see what I'm talking about. So you have the interface, the traffic that's going on on the interface. We're not capturing anything right now. or There isn't any active traffic, uh, the link layer header. So I'm using ethernet. If you're using a wireless adapter, it'll, uh, it'll tell you of that. And then you can see uh, if you want to use promiscuous mode on or on your particular adapter. You can also enable promiscuous mode to run on all interfaces. I don't recommend this. If you are running in a professional environment, I do recommend to, to specify only adap the adapters that you want to work with. And uh, when you talk about the capture filter right over here, that's what we're looking at. So you can specify a capture filter for, you know, the selected interfaces. So I can, uh, I've selected Ethernet zero. That's the cap, uh, that's the capture interface uh, that I'm using. And now we can get started uh, in terms of capturing data that we want to see. Now there is syntax for the capture filters and I'm going to start off with some basic ones. So let's say we want to specify traffic from a particular host. All right. So I'm going to say I want to specify traffic from the host 
point one, all right? So from my access point. And what this will do is it'll only give us traffic from the host 192.168.1.1. Now it's very important to know that this will only capture data from there. It's not going to capture any other data, which is very different from the display filter where you capture all the data on the network and then you use the, the display filter to specify or to search for the particular data you're interested in. So the capture, uh, so the capture filter is used by, uh, you know, mainly by network administrators uh, to specify the desired data or packets. And this is used to reduce the capture size and to get really what they're looking for uh, specifically. All right. So once you've specified your capture filter, uh, you want to hit start. And that is only going to capture traffic from the host 192.168.1.1, uh, which is my uh, which is my access point. All right, so that is how to specify a host. Now we're not getting any traffic from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter uh, a new capture filter, which you can enter right over here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop that. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll just open up my uh, instead of doing that, I'll use my default Kali operating system. So all traffic coming. Uh, from my Kali operating system. I'm just going to click on my interface now and I have a uh, Chromium open here. So I'm just going to open up google.com for example. And as you can see, we get traffic, all the traffic from uh, the host 192.168.1.110. Now, of course, uh, the source and destination are not specified or are not specific. And I'll explain that in a second, but all the data is to do with the host 192.168.1.110. And you can go ahead and analyze the data. You can see that uh, it's using uh, HTTPS. And I'll, I'll also be able to specify the ports here. All right, now, uh, what if we wanted to specify a particular port, as I've just mentioned? So we are looking for the port 443, which is, you know, HTTPS. So I'm going to stop the capture, go back into my capture interfaces, and go to my capture filter. And now the syntax for port is very simple. We type in port and we type in uh, the port that we want, uh, the, the, the port that we're interested in or the port whose traffic we're interested in. So I'm going to hit start and uh, it's going to start capturing uh, and listening for any traffic. So again, I'm just going to reload google.com. Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, again, it'll start giving all the, the traffic that you're looking for in regards to the capture filter that you've entered. In this case, we're looking for all traffic uh, that have the destination port of port uh, 443. Now, of course, you can also specify the source and destination, which I'm going to do right now. I'll show you how to do that right now. So go back into your capture filter. And uh, let's say we are looking for um, a, a source of, uh, or we can say destination. So that is done by DST and source is done by SRC. All right, so DST is used for destination. So we're saying we want a destination of 192.168.1.110. And uh, we are looking for and and is used to add uh, or to concatenate other commands or other capture filters with the already existing one. So we're saying a destination port of 192.168.1.110. And now we can say port uh, 443. And I'm going to hit start. And uh, now we can open up another website. So we can say, for example, we can open up Debian.org here. And we're just going to wait for that. And voila, you can see that now we're only looking for the destination port, which is right over here. Now that you can also change that to your source port. If you're looking for any traffic coming from 192.168.1.1.110. But in this case, we're looking for any traffic that's uh, that, that's going to or being sent to. 192.168.1.110. So you can see if we analyze the, if we just follow the TCP stream here, uh, or, and or the SSL stream, uh, we can see, uh, hopefully I can get the message right over here. It looked like I was able to, uh, to deduce or to dissect that. Uh, but yeah, you can see it right over here. We have the server hello and, uh, the, it looks like the, uh, the acknowledgement was right over here. So the connection is all above and you can go through it right over here. The three, uh, the, TCP three-way handshake. All right, so I'm going to stop that capture and uh, let's see what else do we have to specify. Now, by the way, you can use the port uh, independently and you can use the destination independently and the source independently. So I can say source 192.168.1.110. So, uh, sorry, 0.1.1. So this is all traffic coming from my access point. I'm going to hit enter and uh, let me just get rid of that uh, display filter and uh, we can wait and see if we have any traffic coming from my access point uh, and there we are we can see that we do have a dns query that is coming from 
uh, that is coming from my from my router. We then have an address uh, an ARP or address resolu resolution protocol request right over here. So it's asking, as you can see, who has 192.168.1.102. That's from for for a different computer. Uh, you then have the one that's de designated for us, which is running on VMware. It gives us the destination MAC, and it tells us right over here. All right. So these are all uh, ARP requests, and it keeps on going. And that is how to specify a particular destination uh, or, or a source if you want to. All right. Now we do have uh, the combinations, as I've mentioned, and uh, this is very important because we can also specify particular hosts, which you've seen many, many times. So, for example, we can say uh, we're looking for traffic with the source of 192.168.1.110 and uh, we are looking for a destination of uh, 192.168.1.110, sorry, uh, the source is the router, not the destination. And I'm going to hit start. And uh, now again, if we just try and reload a web page here, hopefully that gives us uh, the results we're looking for. There we are. We have the DNS request. And this only give us traffic uh, between the source and the destination that we have specified. Now you can change this to whatever you want and it will display all the traffic that you're interested in. All right, so let me just stop that. And uh, by the way, you can also specify, you know, if you're looking for your DNS information, you can specify your port right over here and hit start. And this will capture all the DNS information, all the DNS requests, all that good stuff. So again, uh, I'm currently running on this on the on the Kali operating system here. So let me just reload that. Uh, it looked like it did reload. Uh, let, let me see if I can open up one of my other uh, computers right over here. But again, that is how to specify port particular or port specific traffic. Um, so, you know, you could you could be running, for example, you could be looking for SSH traffic or FTP traffic. So I could hit port 21 and again, you get the idea. But again, it's always good to specify what computer or what's the source uh, the, uh, the, the source IP and the destination IP. So you get the traffic that you're looking for. All right. So I'm just going to run one more. So, uh, let's say we're looking for traffic from www.google.com. Now, if I hit enter on our, on our capture filter, you can see that nothing is happening. And that's because we have to specify the host as, and this will directly resolve to the IP address. So I'm going to just click on our interface and, uh, let me just open up google.com here google.com and uh, yeah there we are we did get uh, the request for google.com and again this is going to display all the traffic from the specific host uh, from the specific host that was specified now remember we've not specified ports and that means that uh, if we wanted http traffic only or https traffic only we can do that as well so i can say host www.google.com and i can say and uh, and not port 80 uh, and not port uh, 443, for example. So we're, only look for, so we're only looking for HTTP traffic. So I'm going to hit start and uh, let's see if that does work now. And it shouldn't work because Google by default has is runs on HTTPS. And there we are. We can see that does work by default. Now you can see that if we just change the capture filter here, ho uh, hopefully you're understanding what's going on. So I can change the host to bbc.com. Now by default, bbc.com does not run on HTTPS, all right, so bbc.com, and I'm going to say, and port 80, and not port 80, and let's run that, and let me just go back here into my browser, bbc.com, I'm going to run that, whoops, oh, sorry about that, I keep on messing up with my VM, you can see that it will still not be loaded by Wireshark, now what happens, and there we are, fantastic, so what I was trying to explain here is if we say, we only want to capture, uh, you know, port uh, traffic from uh, HTTP traffic and HTTPS traffic. We can do that as well. So make sure to, to always specify your the ports that you're interested in. So as we've said right over here, the host was bbc.com and we're not looking for port uh, traffic from port 80. So again, we can also customize this to what we're looking for. So um, let me just run a simple one right now. So we can say destination uh, is 192. Uh, 192.168.1.110 and we can say the host is www.google.com and uh, we're not looking for anything from port 80 so keep that out i'm going to hit start and uh, we can go ahead and load google.com apologies my vm is really messing with me right now uh, google.com i'm going to hit enter and let's wait for any information that was uh, that was gathered there uh, let me just reload that one more time and uh, what was the exact syntax that I did enter? Let me just check that out. 
yeah, the destination should be working. So destination is ours and host google.com. And uh, we can say, uh, we can actually get rid of the port 80 command right over there. That should give us the traffic that we're looking for. Uh, there we are, fantastic. So there we are. So the destination port will obviously be different. I was using the source port, which was 443. That's why it was not displaying the traffic. So again, uh, all the, the traffic going to 192.168.110 and all the traffic from google.com, as you can see, automatically the source was resolved to the Google IP servers and there you are. So this is all application data and uh, there you are. So you can actually go ahead and look at the TCP data right over here and just analyze uh, every aspect of the, uh, the TCP connection if that's what you're interested in. So again, Wireshark is extremely uh, powerful when it comes down to the capture filter. And this is really used uh, for specific scenarios when you want, only want to capture a specific type of data or specific type of traffic. All right, so that is all that I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, hopefully this video isn't too long and hopefully explained everything uh, to the point where everyone uh, could understand it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section or on my social networks or on my website. Uh, if you did find value in this video, please leave a like down below. If you have any, you know, any other questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.